Um, probably this woman I met in OB, or no, it was in PB at the Buffalo Exchange there. She came up to me, she was like, your makeup is so pretty, you're so pretty, like let me follow your Instagram. So I gave her my Instagram, we shopped for a little while, and then her boyfriend came up and he like gave really bad vibes and like her like physical demeanor like changed i could tell like he was like abusive probably and so i walked away because like her physical demeanor like dropped and i was like okay this guy's kind of scary and i walked away a couple feet and then i heard him like verbally like abusing her like she didn't want to hang out with you you're so annoying this is what i deal with on a daily basis see how she walked away like as soon as she could this was like five years ago and i literally like still think about it and like get really sad because she unfollowed me on instagram because he obviously made her because like as soon as i heard that i walked up to him and i said excuse me like i can hear you you're being really like a dick to your girlfriend right now and he was like what are you talking about? And I was like, she was being really kind to me. We had a really good time. I don't appreciate that you were saying that I was annoyed by her and that I didn't want to talk to her because it's not true. That's not how I felt. Like if he's doing that in public, what is he doing when he's not in public? As soon as I left the store, he had definitely made her unfollow me because the notification was gone. And I haven't forgotten about that because I just, I worry, I like think about her a lot. And I just hope she got out of that relationship. <laughs> makes me sad. So there was this guy that was outside of this restaurant and he was unhoused. He's like, hey, can, um, can I have some change? And he had like a little cup. I had a couple of, like more dollars than I usually have. And like, I just gave him like 20 bucks and he would like smiled so big. I just could see and feel the gratitude from him. Um, and he basically was just like, my name's Joe. And he repeated that multiple times and like, my name's Joe, and I was like, Joe. So I always remember him because when he was just like, my name's Joe, just like in that moment, he just seemed like a person that was like, I just want another being to kind of recognize me and remember like who I like am or was or whatever. Um, so I remember, always remember Joe, and I said, I'm gonna say hi to him in my head. I'm like, I hope you're having a good day, Joe. Uh, Hawaiian Jesus. Yeah. All right, so. I lived in Oahu for a little bit, right? And going to work every day, I saw him. It was the most majestic, lean, shirtless, and he had a weird swag. And he looked like a Hawaiian, like a Polynesian Jesus. I saw him every morning for like one year. And I always wanted, always walking around this one cemetery. One day I just was like, hey man, I'm gonna go try to talk to this guy. I have to, man, because I don't know who he is. He looks just, I need to take a picture of him and just to see who he is, what he is, and why he's always walking at this certain time. And he's like going towards this like cemetery, little cemetery. Mm -hmm. So I parked and tried to go. The day I wanted to, so I saw him every day, but the day I actually wanted to see him, he never did. He was never there. And every day after that, I never saw him again. So I don't know who he was. The stranger I'll never meet, but he was beautiful. So one time, uh, a couple of years ago, I took a trip out to Ireland I saw a construction worker that had some like really interesting pants that had like external pockets and I just asked them you know blithely like oh hey those are some interesting pants uh, with the with the little interesting pockets and this guy goes to proceed to tell him talk to me for like a good solid three minutes about his pants and about his work the problem was his Irish accent was so thick I couldn't discern a single word all I could tell was that he was really excited to tell me and all I could say in response was oh that's really cool cheers and then walk away <laughs> but I really appreciate that he was just so open just so friendly and I don't know I maybe maybe I made his day it was just like some American wanted to know about his pants for some reason so I still remember that and it still reminds me that Ireland is a magical place where people are willing to talk to you about their pants if you ask them. <laughs> uh, I met a guy who walked up to us with a dog and then he came to us and said, hey, do you want to trade your girl for my dog? Because um, he wants to have a nice girl as her. And yeah, I kept the girl at the end. He could have had the dog. One time a stranger told me that I'm, I'm closer to a million dollars than I thought. 
and he told me I'm only one thought away from a million dollars. And that, that changed my life. How long ago was this? It was about five years ago now. And are you, do you feel like you're closer to a million dollars? I'm one thought closer to a million dollars. Um, I was in high school and I was sitting outside of a Red Robin on a bench with all my books and stuff after school. There was like an older gentleman, probably in his 70s, and he looked at me and he just said, Hey Michelle. And I was like, what the heck? I had no idea who he was. Um, but he, at the end of the conversation, was like, did you wonder how I knew your name? And I was like, yeah, I did actually. Have I met you before? And he was like, no, your name is just written on the side of your book. And I was like, but I always think about that because I was so young and it's a classic example of like not realizing when you're young how obvious some things are, right? <laughs> well, I don't remember her name because she's a stranger. She probably told me briefly. Um, I had just gotten off work. Sometimes I work in the parks during the summer as a park ranger. So it was late and we we're gonna try to head up to Grinnell Glacier by the time it got dark. So we're heading out at three in the afternoon. This was probably not wise on a lot of levels. And we were about halfway up and we came around the corner and there was a young woman sitting on a rock with just tennis shoes and a plastic water bottle, not a proper backpack or anything. And we asked her, like, where's your people? What are you doing? And she said, oh, they went up ahead the trail. I'm sure they'll be back. I said, do you want to hike with us? You shouldn't be sitting here alone. Do you have any bear spray? And she said, no. So I said, well, it's getting dark. Like, you should walk with us. You're almost there. And she didn't have enough water or anything. So she walked with us. And the minute she started to walk, I could see that she had a, a, a disability. Like, her gait was off. Her leg slightly dragged. And so we started to talk and she was telling me about how she was here with a group of friends working, but they had left her behind on the trail to go up ahead to the glacier because she was too slow. And so I was like, well, you shouldn't hike by yourself, come with us. And we, we got up to the glacier and she was so happy that she made it. And we turned around and go back and it took a really long time because she, her walking was unsteady. And she kept saying, I'm sure my friends will be waiting for me. I'm sure they'll be waiting for me. And um, it's a trail one way in, one way out. I, I don't know where they were, but we did not pass her friends and it's getting darker and darker and darker. We get to the parking lot where her friends should have been parked and their car was not there. And um, I could just see her, uh, it was getting, it was dark by this time. And there's no cell service, by the way, there, there's no internet. So. I could tell she was pretty shaken that they weren't there. And I'm like, no worries, just come back to my cabin. You can sleep with us. So I took her back to the cabin with us. We had dinner and she slept at the house. And the next morning I get up and I drive her back to her cabin. I'm trying to withhold judgment on the fact that her friends had abandoned her to the bears in the dark with no water and bear sprays. But anyhow, I get back to, I drop her off, say goodbye, I get back to my own ranger housing and report to work to find out that her friends had indeed reported her missing and, and the law enforcement rangers had been up all night doing a search and rescue and I meanwhile she was sleeping in my cabin like right behind the ranger station <laughs> and I felt really bad. I was like, oh, she was at my house. And um, so the lesson learned is um, you should check with your colleagues when you find someone stranded on a trail. Was, so I will never forget that. It's very humble to find that experience <laughs> on a lot of levels. Yeah. Okay, there, you go. <laughs> uh, there was this one lady, I was about 16 years old, um, and I'd just gotten off of work. And I was like sitting outside waiting for the bus, and like I had my uniform on it and everything. It was like a white shirt, black pants. And this lady comes off a, uh, like a party bus for the baseball game and she like comes up to me and she like was asking like how I was doing as if like, I don't know, I feel like she felt sorry for me for some reason. And she, she went to the subway across the street, bought me a sandwich, gave me a $20 gift card to Subway and just gave me a hug and basically told me that everything was gonna be okay, which I was fine. I was just waiting for the bus, but I think she felt sorry for me in some way, but it really just goes to show 
like how people can be nice. And I, I just honestly think it was probably the most genuine thing that anyone's ever done for me. It's been almost 10 years, so to whoever you were, thank you. It's very nice. The person standing next to me, we flew in on the plane together. I was coming from Virginia and she was going home. We met, what, in Chicago? Chicago, and five hour layover. Yeah, five hour layover five, in Chicago. And she was sitting there and she just looked over at me and she's, she gave me a smile. And I'm like, oh, and I smiled back for her. And it's like, so here we are, I'm, I'm out here for a month. And she says, I'll call you. And here we are, she's giving me a tour. <laughs> and we're strangers no more. Yes. <laughs> People don't take the time to talk and just smile. You know, we did, we made that eye contact and it's no weird stuff, just like, hi, hi. And yeah, and be sure you know you have a friend. <laughs> Would you say you guys are friends now? Yeah. Yes, oh yeah, we're gonna keep in touch. Even though we're, I'm on Virginia and she's here in California. All right, so whenever you're ready, who's one stranger you still remember? Okay, well the answer is, actually, I have never met a stranger because once I do meet them, they become a friend. So every stranger you've met has become your friend? Sure. There you go. Thank you.